Hi everyone, in this video I'll introduce the basic concept of probability to you. So let's assume that you flip a coin and somebody tells you that the probability of getting ahead is 0.5. Now the question is what does this mean? This roughly translates to the following. Translate. So it's not exact, but it roughly translates to this. If you were to toss the coin hundred times, roughly or approximately, you will get fifty heads. You'll not get 50 heads exactly or 50 heads all the time if you repeat this experiment, but roughly you'll get 50 heads. So, so the proportion of getting the number of heads in a bunch of coin tosses roughly corresponds to the probability of that event. So I just mentioned an important term here called event. So let's just talk about events and experiments next. So what is an experiment and what's an event? So an example of an experiment is tossing a coin twice. That is an example of an experiment. That is, that is you toss the coin twice. Now what is an event that is related to this experiment? So an event is this, that you get Two heads. This is one kind of event. You can define another kind of event. Another event that you can define is the following. That you get two different outcomes. That is maybe you get a heads and a tail or a tail and a heads. So these are events. So experiment is tossing the coin twice and these are two possible events that you that we have described. Now there are other kinds of experiments also that we can think of and other kinds of events. So let's just look at another experiment here. So another experiment is you throw two dice. So you have two dice and you throw them together. Now what's an event based on this experiment? The sum of the rolls is six. That's an event. The sum of the two rolls is six. So you can get the sum to be six with a whole bunch of combinations. For example, one and five, two and four, three and three, four and two, and five and one. But these are all different combinations, but this is the event that we are interested in. Another event that we can think of for the same experiment is this one that you get two odd faces. So this can happen if you get one, one, three, three, five, five. So then you get two odd faces, okay? So now what have we studied? What is, what do we, what is probability in the most, uh, in a more approximate sense? And we talked about experiments and events. Now, the next thing that we need to understand is sample space. Now what is a sample space? Now when you conduct an experiment, so you say conduct an experiment, the set of all possible outcomes of that experiment is called sample space. So sample space, we can, we are denoting it by sigma, is a set of all possible outcomes an experiment. Here we'll denote this sample space by sigma. Now let's look at an experiment. So an experiment is this. You roll a die. So you roll a die and let's assume you roll a die once. Now the question is the sigma. 
what is your sigma that will be the face that you get on the die that is you can get a one a two a three a four a five or a six these this is your sigma now say let's consider another experiment so the experiment is you toss three coins you toss three coins okay and you toss them together toss three coins together now what is your sigma for this particular experiment so what you can get is when you toss a coin you can either get a head or a tail so if you look at all these three coins tossed together you can get get heads 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 which i denote by h h h or you can get heads heads tails or you can get heads tails heads h tails tails and similarly so you will have eight different possible outcomes starting from h h h all the way till t t t now this is the sample space of this particular experiment now it's one thing that you have to to remember here is that all elements of a sample space are mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive they are mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive so let's we'll just talk about what this means so mutually exclusive means that if one particular uh, event occurs something else cannot occur for example if you get h h h h if that element of the sample space occurs you cannot get another element to occur for example if h h h occurs nothing none of the other seven elements can occur and what is collectively exhaustive that these are all the possible outcomes of this experiment and there's no other possible outcome that is left so they are collectively ex exhaustive and mutually exclusive now the next thing that we have to, to study is we are going to study simple and compound events because we talked about events and we are now going to study what is a simple and what is a compound event okay so a simple event is something like this so you roll a die a die and it shows a six okay that's a simple event you can't break this event down to further a compound event can be decomposed into simpler events so let's look at an example two simpler ones so we'll look at an example here in a second so say uh, you roll a dice okay and the event that we are interested is the sum of the two rolled dice is six that's what we are interested in and this can occur in multiple different ways for example you could get as one five or 2, 4, or 3, 3, or 4, 2, or 5, 1. These are the five different ways in which you could get the sum to be 6. Each and every one of these is a simple event. Each one of them is a simple event. Combined, they, they give us a compound event. Now, having studied up to this, I'll conclude this video. In the second part of the video, we'll talk about sets and sample spaces. So please watch the next video in the playlist. Thank you for watching.